Hey there students, um, on this clip we're going to be going over an example on how to uh, graph um, a quadratic function that's given in um, standard form, okay? So let's go ahead and write down the instruction for the notes. It looks a little bit long because we're going to be doing a lot. Alright, so the title is Graphing Quadratic Functions. Um, this is what we're going to be doing. Uh, so, task number one is to class number one is to find the coordinates of the vertex find the coordinates find the coordinates of the vertex of the given uh, quadratic function quadratic function we are going to be using a different process today other than completing the square after finding the coordinates of the vertex I want you to uh, state the state the extrema the extrema and value okay extrema and value is it max or mean and what is the value of the max or the mean and then after that, I'd like you to um, find the zeros, find the zeros, or roots, zeros, I can also, can also call them roots, and express them as, and express them as points, express them as points, okay, because these are actually points in the graph. After finding the zeros and expressing them as points, now we're going to generate a table. So for step number four, I'd like you to make a table of values. Make a table of values. Um, with the vertex. With the vertex, that's going to be one set of coordinates with uh, the vertex. and uh, two um, symmetric test points, two symmetric test points, okay? So I just want you to pick a point before and after the vertex that are symmetric relative to the axis of symmetry, all right? That's a good way for you to check uh, for the accuracy of your, of your, uh, of the accordant of your vertex, okay? Um, in, I mean, notes. Zeros may not be used. Zeros may not be used. Okay. So if your test points, the x coordinate of your test points overlap with the points that you selected up here, you have to use another set. Okay. The more points we have, the more accurate our graph is going to be. The aim of this activity is accuracy again. Okay. Because we graph the focus is on the accuracy of our graphs. All right. Number five. Uh, sketch the graph. Sketch the graph. Um, as 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 accurately as you can. Sketch the graph as accurately as you can. I'm not going to take um crappy graphs today. Okay, they have to be very very accurate. So sketch the graph as accurately as you can. Uh, labeling, labeling. Uh, the vertex, the vertex, zeros, uh, y-intercept, y-intercept, um, axis of symmetry, axis of symmetry, uh, extrema, and as you may expect, value, all right, and value. All right, and then step number six is, uh, for those of you with graphing calculators, uh, pick your graph with a calculator. Check your graph with a calculator. Okay, just to make sure that everything is good, okay? And also gives you a calculator, also gives you exposure to getting more practice on how to exploit the graphing functionality of your calculators, okay? All right, 
Now let's go ahead and get started. The function that we're going to do for number, for example one, we're going to do all these six steps. Example one, um, we are going to look at the function y equals um, x squared plus 2x minus 3. Okay, this equation is in standard form. Okay, um, if it's a vertex form, it will be easy for us to do a lot of this without much work. But this is our, this is in standard form. So first thing we want to do is we want to find the vertex, okay? The vertex has the x coordinate and the y coordinate. So to find the x coordinate of the vertex, we need a, b. So from this equation, we know that a is 1. There's no number in front here, so you can always insert the multiplicative identity, which is 1. Uh, B is 2, and C, which is Y intercept, is negative 3. Alright, so X coordinate, X coordinate of uh, the vertex. Alright, to find the X coordinate of the vertex, we're going to use the formula we just went over X equals negative B over 2A. Okay? B is 2, A is uh, 1, so we plug both of them into this formula, so that's going to give us um, negative 2 over 2 times 1. To work that out, you have negative 2 over 2, divides out to negative 1. So this tells me that the x coordinate of my vertex is negative 1. Alright, we have that down. Um, and then the y coordinate, the y coordinate of the vertex, coordinate of the vertex, I'm going to use the formula I showed you, which just involves plugging in the x coordinate, right? So we're going to have y equals f of what? Let me put that in green so you see f of negative b over 2a. This is just a fancy way of saying plug in the answer you got up here into the original function, okay? So f of negative b over 2a is the same thing as f of, wait a minute, what is negative b over 2a? We already found it, right? Negative 1 f of negative 1. What does f of negative 1, what does this mean? It means for all the x's you substitute this input value which is negative 1. Okay? Let's plug it in. We're going to have negative 1 square plus 2 times negative 1 minus 3. Alright? We're going to use the order of operations to simplify this. Negative 1 squared is 1 minus 2 minus 3 which equals 1 minus 5. 1 minus 5 is negative 4. So that tells me that the y coordinate of my vertex is negative 4. Okay? So with that information, I know for a certainty, combining my x and my y, that my vertex is the coordinates are uh, negative 1 and negative 4. Alright, so we have one cool piece of information um, that we're going to be using. Now, from here, I can find a lot. Okay, a lot of things I can find using this information. First thing I'm going to find is the extrema and value. Extrema, extrema and value. Uh, now, uh, extrema, is it a max or a min? Is this a happy or a sad parabola? What tells us? Well, we can scroll up, take a look at A. A is positive, right? Since A is positive, we're going to have a happy scenario. Basically, we have a smiling parabola. Uh, so, um, if the parabola is happy, then that means that we're going to have a low point at the extrema. So we're going to have a minimum. We're going to have a minimum uh, since oh wait, the minimum and the value is going to be uh, the value is y uh, equals negative four. Okay. The reason is because our uh, a, which is equal to one, is what is positive, which gives you a happy scenario, and your extrema is a low point, which is a minimum. Okay, that the sign of a which is positive tells you that we have a minimum, and uh, the y coordinate of the vertex, and y vertex. Y vertex tells me the value of uh, the minimum. This is also equal to k. Remember, hk? Same thing as we did before, this is h and this is k. Well, in this context, it is the y coordinate of our vertex that determines the value of our minimum. Alright? So we have our extreme, which is a min, and the value is y equals negative 4. Now we need to find the zeros. 
we need to find the zeros of our function, okay? So to find the zeros, we're going to employ our factoring techniques. Um, so let's rewrite the function that we're working with. We're going to, 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 to do this, we're going to set the function equal to zero, okay? So we want to know what x values make the function equal to zero. So we're going to have x squared plus 2x minus 3. Notice I'm setting it equal to zero. All right, if I solve this equation, quadratic equation, I can use the zero product property to finish it up, okay? I mean, after factoring. So let's factor it first. It's an easy x game. AC goes on the top, B goes on the bottom. AC is negative 3, B is uh, 2. Uh, so what works here? Only one pair of multiple, 1 times 3, so it has to be one, some form of combination of 1 and 3, right? Uh, since the sum is positive, that means the small has to be negative. Alright, plugging that in here, we have x squared minus x plus 3x minus 3. Let's break it down the same number factor by grouping. So, uh, from the first two, uh, well, let's, well, let's break it down. x times x minus x plus 3 times x minus 3. So I can factor out x from this side. We got an x, we have x minus 1. And then I can take out a positive 3. Always bring down this side. Take out this 3 and this 3, you're going to be left with x minus 1. And then if you factor it, you have x minus 1 times x plus 3 equals 0. Now we're going to use the zero product property. x minus 1 equals 0. Or x plus 3 equals 0. If I solve the first one, I'll get 1 as the first uh, 0, and then this is by adding 1 to both sides. And this one, I minus 3 from both sides, I get x equals negative 3 as the second 0. Okay? So, uh, these are my zeros for my zeros as points. Zeros as points are going to be uh, 1, comma, 0, and, um, and negative 3, comma, 0. Remember, zeros are when the y's are zero, right? What are the x values when the y is zero? So these are the points. These are going to be points on our graph. All right, now let's go over to making a table. We're going to make a table uh, of values. So I'm going to make a table. There's a special way I'm going to construct this table, so watch this carefully. It's going to be a uh, three, by, 3 by 2. Well, I'm going to make a 3 by 3 table, but technically it's a 3 by 2. All right, so my x column is going to be really skinny, but my y column is the, my central column is going to be wider. It's going to be three by three. The central column is going to be really tiny, and then something like this. All right, so I'm going to have x as the first uh, column, and in a central column, I'm going to have my function y, which is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 3, okay? And then in the last column is my y value. All right, so let's plug in the points. Remember the instruction says we have to use um, the vertex and the symmetric points, two symmetric points. So what are our vertex? It's negative 1, negative 4, right? So my x is negative 1, and my y is negative 4, okay? You can put a smiley face here because you don't have to do any work. All right, um... Now, we're going to put the point, pick a point before and after negative 1. We can put negative 2 is before, and then negative, and then 0 is after, all right? So, these are symmetric because if you go one unit in both directions, there's a uh, one unit symmetry from the vertex, okay? Now, I'm going to plug in these two arguments into this function, and the outputs must be identical since I'm going the same distance in both directions, all right? So, for my y, I'm going to have... Uh, negative 2 square plus 2 times negative 2 minus 3. What did I do here? I just plugged in negative 2, the x, into the function. That gives me 4 minus 4 minus 3. If I work that out, I'll get 4 minus 7, which is equal to negative 3. So my output for negative 2 is negative 3. All right, now I'm going to plug my out, plug in this 0 into the function. I should get negative 3 or else my answer is, or else my vertex is wrong, okay? So I'm going to go y equals, plug in 0 into the function, 0 squared plus 2 times 0 minus 3. 
Okay, that's going to become 0 plus 0 minus 3, which equals negative 3. So your output is negative 3. Excellent. These two match, so that means I'm looking good. All right, now we're ready to generate our graph. So let's make a graph of the function. We get accuracy is a goal here. Now, since our vertex is on the third quadrant, exaggerated downwards, we're going to make our quadrant 3 the biggest. And we're going to make it considerably deep um, relative to the other quadrants because our vertex is negative 1, 4. Negative 1, negative 4. All right, so this is the graph. Um, let's graph the vertex first because it's all centered around that. We're going to go one unit to the left. And then we're going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4. Negative 4 units down. Uh, there goes our vertex. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to graph these two points. The first set is negative 2, negative 3, and then the next one is 0, negative 3. Um, just to let me just do this real quick, I also encourage you to do that if you're having difficulty reading this table, is just to make a 3 by 2 uh, table just to organize what you just found. So it's easier to read, it's easier on the eyes. This is x. This is y. So we have negative 2, negative 3, uh, negative 1, negative 4, and then 0, negative 3. You can do this so it's more organized. This is just like, this shows the work and then this shows the final result. So if this helps you, you can make this chart also, all right? So we're going to graph negative 2, negative 3. So negative 2, negative 3 is right here. And then 0, negative 3 is right here. Everything good. Um, next thing we're going to graph is, is are the zeros. The zeros are 1, 0, 1, 0, right here. And the next zero is negative 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 3, 0, right there. Okay? This is your x coordinate. Alright, so we can see the symmetry happening with our graph here. So we're going to try and draw the best uh, parabola we possibly can. So it goes through this, through here, and then it curves through there, and it goes up. And the other one goes through this point, and then goes through that point, and then goes up. Okay? A little bit bigger. Alright, so there you have it. Try to make it as accurate as possible. Uh, so now we're going to have to label. Okay? So the first thing I like to label is the vertex. This is the vertex. Vertex. And its coordinates are negative 1, negative 4. I want you to see the connection between the work, the table, and the graph. So that's why you label it everything. And then this piece right here is the axis of symmetry. Uh, uh, axis of symmetry. Axis of symmetry, which is x equals negative 1. Alright. And if I trace this to my uh, y, y axis, which I failed to label, this is my y axis. It's going to tell me the extreme and the value. The extreme I see is, is a minimum. You see how it's a low point? Minimum. And the value is y equals what? Negative 4. And that agrees with what we had up there, okay? And then this is a 0. Uh, z is 0. What is the value of this 0? x equals uh, negative 1. And then this is another 0, okay? 0, which is x equals negative 3. So that basically shows um, everything that we got, uh, everything that we got in our problem here. All right? Okay. All right, now we're going to verify the accuracy of our graph using the uh, graphing calculator. So you might as well bring out your graphing calculators. Uh, press the Y button. We're going to be entering this function into this calculator. And then comparing our graph with what we have here to make sure that our results are accurate, okay? So we're going to type in the function x carrot 2 for x squared plus 2x minus 3. Enter graph. Bam, there goes your graph, okay? There's also another cool feature. You see how similar it is? There's also another cool feature you can use here, which is to calculate the minimum. So let's see. Second function, calculate minimum. Enter. It says left bound. So go to the left of the low point. Press enter. Right bound. Go to the right of the low point. Enter. It says yes. Enter. 
down. Negative 4 is your minimum. Y equals negative 4, Y equals negative 4, and it happens around X equals negative 1. So that is perfect. That means our graph is correct. Okay? So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. Uh, please subscribe to my channels um, so you can get more cool updates such as this. You can share with your friends the contents of this video via Facebook or Twitter or Google+. More videos at MadGreatStuff.com. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.